On day two of graphing polynomials, we're going to be taking a look at polynomials that are in standard form. They haven't been factored yet. So for the first one, f of x equals x cubed minus x, we're going to do the same thing we've done in day one. We're going to find the type of polynomial, find the roots, find the y-intercept, and then sketch the graph. Now the nice thing about this form for part a to get the type it's very easy. The, first, the lead coefficient, this x cubed, that tells me it's odd positive. And remember what odd positive looks like? It starts negative and goes up. So it looks like a cubic graph. So we have the type already. Now, the roots we're going to get in a second. We'll get those last. Because the y-intercept is also very easy to get. If I let x be 0, I just get 0. So our y-intercept, 0, 0. Next, we're going to uh, find the roots. Now, to find the roots, we do have to factor. Okay, so I take a look here. If I factor this, I get x. If I factor f of x, we could factor out an x, and that's going to leave us with x squared minus 1. Of course, I can factor some more. I get x plus 1, x minus 1. This is the factored form, and that gives me my roots. So my first root is 0, negative 1, and 1. Now notice there is no multiplicity, so we're okay. Now we can sketch it. Just like what we've been doing, I have 1, 0 at 0, 1, 0 at negative 1, and 1 at positive 1. And again, because it's odd positive, it starts below and it's positive. And there's no multiplicity, so we just go through and back down and through again. And we get our cubic graph, and that's what a function should look like. Now, number two, let's go and find the type. Very easy to do. I do have to consider the negative one-half, though, this time, and that's x squared. So this is an even negative. So it's going to look like an upside-down parabola in the end. So it starts down ends down. Now, before I get the roots, the first thing I'll find is the y-intercept. Now, if I let x be 0, be careful, you do have to take the negative 2 this time, we get negative 1 half times 0, 0, 2. Whoops. So we get negative 1. So we get the point 0, negative 1 this time. And now I find the roots. So I factor it. Ignore the 1 half, but if I factor x squared minus 3x plus 2, we get x minus 2, x minus 1. So my roots are 2 and 1, and those are my roots. 1 half doesn't give me a root, so we don't have to worry about that one. Only the, only the factors <coughs> that have an x will give me a root. And now we graph it like it's hot, graph it like it's hot. It, the x-axis at t 1 and 2 and 0, negative 1. Now, it's, e, it's odd, uh, sorry, even negative, so it starts below, ends down, and kind of goes through like this. Now, it should be, whoops, sorry about that. It should be more of a parabola, but you're not going to be perfect with this method right here, okay? All right, question For example 3, same idea, we're going to keep going here. We are going to first have to find the type. Now, to get the type very easy to do. We get our x squared. x squared becomes x to the fourth. So this is even positive. So it looks like a parabola. Starts up, ends up. Worry about the roots of the second. Get the y-intercept. The y-intercept is easier to do at this point. f of 0. If I let 0, we get 0, 0. That's negative 6 times 0, negative 9. We get 54. So we get 0, 54. Now we're going to go ahead and get the roots, but remember, we first have to factor. This is easy to do. We get x plus 6, x minus 1. Here we get x plus 3, x minus 3. Set those equal to 0. We get negative 6, 1, negative 3, positive 3. And now we can just sketch this. Negative 6, negative 3, 1, positive 3. 
and we know it's going to cross up here at 54. So we know it's even positive. What that means is at the very end, the very left, it's going to start up and end up. We go through the negative 6, through the 3, through the 54, through the 1, and back through the 3. Now, hopefully you've recognized this function by now. You have the world-famous Wernow function. Let me autograph this one for you. You're welcome. Number four is a little bit trickier to factor. We'll get to that in a second. But first, let's find out the type. Just have to look at the lead coefficient. If it's not in factor form, just look at the lead coefficient. Negative x to the fourth, this is even negative. It looks like an upside down parabola. In other words, it starts down, ends down. Get the y-intercept, let x be 0, 0, 0, negative 4, 0, negative 4, there's the point. People say, Mr. Werner, what's the point? 0, negative 4, that's what I tell them. Roots. Now we have to factor this. So to factor this, I'm going to write it out one more time here. The first thing I'm going to do is factor out a negative. That negative is going to mess us up if we're not careful. So we get x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. And we should have, we've seen factors like this before. We're going to get x squared <coughs> minus 1, x squared minus 4. Oh no, you're absolutely right. I see you see it. Two difference of squares. You've got to continue factoring. We get x plus 1 x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2. Please don't do it. Some people do x plus 4, minus 4. Be careful. You've got to take the square root of that. Set them equal to 0, and then you get all your roots. Negative 1, 1. Negative 2, 2. And now we can sketch it. That doesn't have to be perfect. Cross it at negative 4 this time. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. So it starts down, ends down, so I go up to the root to negative 2. We have to come back down to the 1. Now notice, I'm not going to come back up here and go down. Why not? They're not roots. If these were roots, you would have them up here, but we don't have any point like that. So it has to go through the negative 4, back through the 1, and back through the n. Now if you notice, the, if you combine these two functions, you get the Mr. Wernow function, M-W, Mr. Wernow. All right. Let's take a look at number five here real quick. All right. For example, number five, same idea. We're going to first find the type. And that's easy enough to do. That's our 2x to the fourth which is even positive. It starts up, ends up. It looks like a U. Now, what that means is, if you zoom out on, on the calculator, at the very end, it's going to look like a parabola. We don't know what's happening in the middle. That's what the roots tell us. And we'll see that in just a second. All right, get the y-intercept. Let x be 0. Easy breezy. 0, 0, 0. Now we got to get the roots. Oh, man, we got to factor. Man. All right. But first, notice what can I factor out? That's right, an x squared. I can factor out an x squared here. And that's going to give us 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. And now we've got to factor this. Ooh, whatever way works. I would like to use my cross-multiplication method right here. Uh, 1 and 2. Let me try uh, 3 and 2. If I cross multi and both negative, uh, negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Ooh, close. Let me try switching them. Negative 2 and negative 3. Minus 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So I get my roots. Now, if you want to learn how to do that, come ask me. But however you can factor, that's cool. We just want you to be able to factor in here, okay? Factoring people make happy people. Get the roots now. We get 0, right? But that's going to be m2. x equals 2. And x equals 3 halves. Oh my gosh, we got to graph a fraction. That's why we like this method. 
We ain't looking for accuracy, people. Zero, that's my M2. Two and three halves. Oh, there's three halves. It's in between zero and two. Not drawing the scale. My y-intercept is zero, zero. Got it. We know it's going to be parabolic in shape, so it's going to start up and end up. So, what does M2 do to a graph? Well, if we go to it, remember it's going to bounce it up. M2 is basically saying the power there is 2. And if that's just x squared, x squared is a parabola. What that's saying is at x equals 0, there's a parabola, which is what I'm drawing, a parabola. I go through the 3 halves, no multiplicity, back through the 2, and look again, the world famous worn out function. Now, remember what I said, it's going to look parabolic. If you ignore the roots, let me scratch these out of the way, get them out of the way. If we ignore the roots, what shape does that look like? A parabola. That's what even positive does. The ends look like a parabola there, and that's what we have. All right. Um, let's take what I would like you to try to do on your own is number six. Okay? And we're going to quickly take a look. Be careful when you factor this one. This is our grouping method. We'll go over that one in class on Monday. But let's take a look at number 7, factoring a difference of cubes. This is our a cubed minus b cubed. And when you factor that, you're going to get a minus b, a squared, plus ab, plus b squared. So when I factor this one, well, let's go and get the type first. The type, it's x cubed, so it's odd, positive. The y-intercept, very easy. Let f of x be 0, we get negative 8. And now we get the roots. So to get the roots, we're going to factor this. We're going to get x minus 2 because this is 2 cubed. Right? That's 2 cubed. So we get x minus 2. x squared minus plus 2x plus 4. So we just basically square that 2 right there. Set that equal to 0, we get x equals 2. Now, this one is not going to have a real solution. We'll talk more about that later on, how we solve for that one, okay? But not for right now. And now we just graph it. x equals 2. My only root, negative 8. So when I graph it, it's odd, neg odd positive. Starts negative, ends up. Remember, it looks like a cubic graph. Oh, it is a cubic graph. Silly me. All right, anyway, so if you want to go through the 8, through the 2 like a cubic, it is a cubic, and that's what our graph looks like. Ta-da! Boom, 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 boom. Negative, positive. Awesome. All right, now, how do we apply this? Where can we use this? That's for part 2, and I want you to look at that.